Hey guys, how are you all? Today we're reviewing No Lolly, No Life. No wait, it's called Black Bullet. Never mind. Huh. Okay, so last time we picked up with Black Bullet, it was on episode 6 where Tina Sprout was just introduced, another cute lolly. And as 7, 8, 9, and 10 progresses, nothing really happens. I mean, I had to write recaps for them and I had no idea what to write because it just, the plot is, oh. They could have done it so much better. Black Bullet turned out to be one of those series that started out with a really dramatic premise. I mean, it was pretty similar to Shingeki 2. It was basically mankind pushed to the brink of extinction. Scary creatures outside the borders of the walls. This time, the walls were scientific monoliths and the fighters were civil agency servant people and not cool titan slayers with three-dimensional maneuver gear. And, you know, it had a lot of potential. It was like a really cool sci-fi kind of thing. And they had lollies in it, so I mean, you can't go wrong with lollies. But as the series progressed, it turned out to be one of those stories that didn't have enough depth, even though it was trying to be dramatic. Like, it's throwing all these things at you, like, look at all these little girls, they're so innocent, and they're just fighting for their lives and trying to protect mankind, but society hates them, but they're still doing it, look how innocent and adorable they are! But at the same time, nothing else is really happening, I mean, they're just kind of showing you the society, how it works. And I guess it's kind of building up to the last little riot that we saw in last week's episode. But with everything that's going on, nothing's really going on. I mean, after the first arc with Kagetane and Kohina, and they had to recover the, the giant silver case with the tricycle inside, Rentaro just kind of goes on and keeps doing his own thing. I mean, yes, right now Monolith 32 has just collapsed. However, there wasn't that much building up to that. From the moments they're fighting against Tina, trying to protect Sei Tenshi from Tina, from the one they recruit Tina, and now they've recruited like Katsujiro Yuzuki and another civil servant agent so they're kind of like doing a whole group and now they have another group. It wasn't confusing per se, I feel like they just didn't have enough time to develop each of the pairs individually. And the stuff with Tina, I swear, say Tenshi Sama just waves her magical Tokyo wand over everything and all the papers are passed. There's no paperwork, there are no restrictions, nobody cares, as long as say Tenshi Sama says yes, go on and do whatever you want Rantaro, I'm behind you. He can do it. Like, they freaking recruit Tina into the group, and I'm not complaining, because Tina is actually my favorite lolly in the entire series. But you have to keep in mind that, like, five minutes before Tina starts serving Rentaro tea at the agency, she's like freaking trying to kill Setenshi, and she's like fighting Rentaro, and she's like a crazy, like, weapon of mass destruction. Yes, she's an innocent little girl that was pushed into war and violence because of who she was, but you know, have some precautions, take some precautions against this, this adorable little weapon of mass destruction. I mean, does the cuteness distract you from the fact that she like friggin' bombed your car three times, say Tenshi Sama? Seriously. And then Tina gets integrated into the group, and I'm fine with that because, like I said, I really like Tina. So Rentaro ends up going on this little personal mission to find different people to join his new fighting group, Adjuvant. And at the end of episode 9, they kind of get together and then they camp out, they get ready to like fight the Gastrea, blah blah blah. Honestly, I thought that that entire part, those like two to three episodes where Rentaro's just going around looking for people and looking for members, I thought that was a really weak part of the plot. Like, it was so slow paced and was so pointless. The whole recruiting thing could have taken like 10 minutes for one pair and 10 minutes for another pair. And I feel like it could have done in the subplot direction rather than the main plot. I feel like they should have kept a lot of like action stuff going on in the main plot. And as Rantaro continues to battle Gastrea with Enju, he's also meeting these other members that kind of like come into the fray, you know what I mean? We friggin' watch the guy walk around for like an entire episode looking for members, physically looking for members. Like sometimes um, when people go on investigations or they like try to recruit people, they do it in like a montage way or they just kind of like flip through it and they like skip past the tedious part. We got all the tedious part in Black Bullet and I didn't like that. It was so pointless. You're probably wondering why I'm doing my pre-finale thoughts when it's episode 10 because there are going to be 12 episodes. Um, one, because I'm getting my wisdom teeth out on Saturday and I don't think I can talk next week when episode 11 comes out. And two, because I'm pretty sure um, episode 11 will be really closely connected to episode 12, so it's better if I kind of like group them together in a final, final episode review. I did predict that Monolith 32 wasn't gonna last the full like three days, and obviously it's gonna like collapse beforehand. They like friggin' killed all the other little cursed children, and I really didn't like that. That was pretty dark, and they did 
they did that same thing in a lot of anime where they contrast the really light and bright side of like the characters with this really grisly death at the very end and i understand that but i feel like it was too abrupt like we barely got to see the students um we've only seen them like once another time when Rentaro was just like starting lessons with them and then like we see them and they're really close and all of them want to marry Rentaro and then after that they get slaughtered all of them i mean it, you could have left one of them alive just for like dramatic impact but no they killed all of them as if that wasn't bad enough monolith 32 collapses like right after and then he goes get enju and then he goes to like get enju and i thought enju was gonna have a really dramatic moment at the very end of like episode 10 where her eyes just go bright red and she like glares and she's like yes i want revenge but she just ends up looking like really like sad and longingly up at her and she's like huh and those giant lolly eyes, right? Those eyes! I don't know where I'm going with this. This is just all my thoughts that I've like amassed so far between like episodes 7 and 10. Because it was just really a lot of filler. There isn't even much plot to talk about because it was so straightforward. I'm wondering if Kagetane is going to come back because I feel like I, I saw him in one of the previews. But I, I don't know how that's going to work. I mean, society is pretty flawed. They do know that cursed children are fighting to save their asses and they're still kind of like beating on them. That little girl that Rantaro and Tina meet on the streets, the one with the blindfold, I'm pretty sure she has something to do with the monolith because you get some scenes of her interjected into the parts where Rantaro is noticing the monolith collapsing, that explosion. She's kind of like standing there praying. I don't know if she's like working some sort of spell or whatever. I don't know what her story is, but she does mention that um, when she was a kid, her mom really hated her eyes. So she poured liquid lead into her eyes. And I was like, holy crap, I just want to give that little girl a hug. And, and the more important question, now that we've gone into episode 10, is why are all the little girls attracted to Rentaro? Because he's not that interesting of a character. I mean, I know that he's like really nice to little girls and he goes to see them, but like, are there no other good looking civil security agents around? Or is he just, is he just because he's the main character? I have no idea. I don't know what else to say about Black Bullet. I don't know, what do you guys think? Um, what do you guys think of what's going on so far? Who is your favorite? Lolly, do you like Rentaro? Hate him. Does more stuff happen in the manga? I should go read the manga, right? Please tell me more stuff happens in the manga because I know that the anime has no way of like encompassing everything that's gone on unless it goes on for like four seasons. Anyways, thank you guys very much for watching. Um, I will put out a final Black Bullet finale series video and overall series thoughts, but these are a lot of my series thoughts already because I can't really like go into detail in the plot because there isn't much plot. And if you like this, don't forget to hit like or subscribe or comment and more videos will be coming out very soon. So I will see you guys then. Bye!